Well, first of all, I want to thank the uh, coalition that put this together and uh, made this possible. I think that having civic discourse during our elections is very important. Um, I also want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your evenings to uh, show interest in our electoral process and further educate yourselves. Uh, my name is Sam Gingling. I currently serve as the state rep for uh, the 62nd district. I have been serving for about 18 months. I was elected in 2012. If someone five years ago told me that I would be serving in the House of Representatives and in the state, I would be, I would have said, there's no way. We've accomplished a lot over the past uh, 18 months. I really enjoy the um, opportunity to serve you and I would greatly appreciate um, the opportunity to continue to work hard for you in Springfield and help get the state back on the right track. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Rod Drabinski, you have up to one and a half minutes. Right, thank you. My name is Rod Drabinski, and I'm running to be your representative because, quite frankly, our state is a mess, and we need someone that's gonna fight for the hardworking taxpayers of this district. I spent my professional career being a prosecutor with the Lane County State's Attorney's Office. For over 12 years, I have fought for victims of crime. I have fought to make our community safer and better. I'm running because, unfortunately, we're not being represented appropriately in Springfield. My opponent has spent his career in politics, and he's run by saying, telling one thing and doing another. He ran, he tells his voters that he's an independent, but yet he votes with Michael Madigan over 98% of the time. He tells the voters that he's independent, but he takes over $100,000 from Michael Madigan's corrupt political machine to run his dirty campaigns. He says, he says that he's a tax cutter, but yet since he's gone down to Springfield, he has not done one thing that has actually given the hardworking taxpayers of our district any real tax relief. And that has to change. I'm running because I want to represent you. I want to represent the taxpayers of this district because we deserve a break and that's exactly what I'm going to give the voters here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the first question will be answered first by uh, Rob Drabinski, and the question is, what is your position on Senate Bill 16, which deals with school funding? Well, I'm completely against Senate Bill 16, especially the way it is now. Like many of you, I'm a husband and a father, and I send my daughter to public school in Fremont Public School District. As soon as Senate Bill 16 was passed by the Senate Democrats down, down state, I looked into it and I found that almost every single school district in State Representatives District 62 is going to lose money. Schools from Grays Lake are going to lose over $2 million a year. Schools in Wakanda are going to lose over $3 million a year. In total, all the schools that lose money as a result of Senate Bill 16 in our district are going to lose over $12 million per year. And that's going to cause our property taxes to go up. It's going to hurt our kids. We can't afford Senate Bill 16, and I am in complete opposition to it. Thank you. Sam Yingling, same question. Senate Bill 16 obviously addresses something that we desperately need to address in the state, which is um, education funding overhaul. There have been, um, there's obviously been much debate about this, but something that I do need to correct is that um, although my opponent is correct that some school districts would suffer, the Round Lake School District would get over $5 million under this. So there is something to keep in mind when you're looking at the 62nd District and looking at the population of the Round Lake School District and how the Round Lake School Districts are affected by this. Um, I, I agree that I think it's premature to be voting on this. I anticipate there is going to be a very rigorous debate in the House of Representatives on this. What I would like to see is ISBE to put together more than a two-year projection. Right now, that's it. They just gave two years. I would like to see up to a 10-year projection on that so we can have an understanding of the full impacts. Thank you. Our second question will be answered first by Sam Youngling, and the question is, can you please explain your position on the state income tax increase? Sure, I've been very, very clear on this. Um, I was not in the General Assembly when the state income tax was increased to its current level. Um, it's something I have been vocally opposed to. It's something that I have consistently been on record as opposing. There was an attempt um, at the end of this past cycle to extend that income tax, and I was one of the vocal advocates who said, no, we don't, that's not the right direction. 
One of the issues that we're facing here in the state is the fact that the Illinois General Assembly and the Illinois government has a serious credibility issue. And although I wasn't in the General Assembly when this tax increase was passed, the commitment was made that it would be temporary. And so I feel that it is my obligation to uphold that commitment as well as provide tax relief to working families. So I am against the tax increase. I've always been against the tax increase. And, and that, is, that is what my position is. Thank you. Rod Drabinsky, same question. Well, I believe that that tax increase needs to be sunset and we need to go back to the tax rate as it was back in 2011. I think that the politicians in Springfield lied to us when they told us that that money was gonna go to pay down our debts because it didn't go to that purpose. It went to increase budgets across the board and that was unfair to the taxpayers here in this district. I think that that tax hike needs to be sunsetted. Now, it's fine that my opponent tells you that he's against the tax hike. However, he just voted for the 2015 budget which overspends, spends more than we're gonna take in and I understand how you can say that you're opposed to tax hikes when you're spending more than you're taking in. How is that gap going to be filled? It's going to be filled with tax hikes. It's going to be filled with more debt. You can say all you want that you oppose tax hikes, but if you spend more than you take in, you're effectively forcing tax hikes on everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, we do not have rebuttals, okay? Um, the next question will be answered first by Rod Drabinsky, and the question is, what is the first piece of legislation you want to introduce? When I get down to Springfield, I've worked as a prosecutor now for over 12 years, and I've specifically worked on gang issues for over seven years. If I were elected to go down to Springfield, the first piece of legislation I would introduce would be enhancements on gang crimes. I think what our society needs to recognize is we need to address the problem and not the symptom of, of what we face in our society. Too often when we see gun violence, we blame the gun. When someone gets a cancer, we blame the cigarette. When someone gets overweight, we blame the fast food joint. The fact of the matter is when a shooting happens, 90% of the time it was driven by gangs. So we need to address the gang problem that is becoming more and more of a problem in our community here in the 62nd district and in Chicago to our south. What I would propose is an enhancement on all crimes if the prosecutor can prove that whatever crime was committed was done in the furtherance of gang activity. Thank you. Sam Yingling? One of the first bills that I introduced when I went to Springfield was a government consolidation bill. We in Lake County have the 15th highest property tax um, property, tax property in the entire country. And this is something that I've been very passionate about is government consolidation and the elimination of more than our 7,000 units of local government. All we have to do is look at our property tax bill to realize how overtaxed we are with all of these redundant and duplicative uh, layers of government. That is an issue that I would, I would push again. Another bill that I, I co-sponsored when I was down there is a property tax freeze. I don't have to tell you about the market crash that happened. And when our values go down, our property taxes should not be going up. People cannot afford to do that. As they're losing their wealth, they can't afford to be paying more in taxes. So I would also be um, pushing and reintroducing a property tax freeze bill in a declining market. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Sam Yingling. And the question is, what is your feeling on uh, increasing the minimum wage and the effect it will have on small businesses? And I think that's a great question. This is obviously something that's going to be on the ballot. Uh, it, there's a, a non-binding referendum question that'll be on the ballot. I think that we live in a morally bankrupt society when we allow someone to work 40 hours a week and still be forced to live in poverty. I just read an article today that the buying power of our minimum wage goes back to the 19, you know, 1968. So since 1968, the minimum wage, people earning the minimum wage have not seen an increase. I support an increase in the minimum wage. I do support one though that exempts people who are 18 years and younger. I understand that you do have a lot of positions that are, are seasonal or part-time jobs and um, a lot of that is training. 
but I do support a minimum wage. I believe that, that a rising tide lifts all boats. We have seen repeatedly that when people, people who are earning the minimum wage, they don't have a choice but to spend the money. They have to spend the money to survive. That will lead to economic growth. Cutting them off at the knees and further preventing people from being able Thank to you. earn a living is wrong. Thank you. Rod Drabinsky. Um, thank you. I believe that Illinois has the fourth highest minimum wage in the country, and we have the highest minimum wage in the Midwest. The biggest problem that our state faces is not the fact that we have a low minimum wage. We have one of the highest minimum wages in the country. The problem that we have is we don't have enough jobs. And if we raise the minimum wage now, we will kill, we will kill jobs in our state. And it will hurt hardworking families that are trying to get by. I don't support cutting the minimum wage, unlike what mailers on behalf of my opponent have said. My opponent's allies in Springfield have said mailer after mailer to the district saying that I support cutting the minimum wage, and that is absolutely false. It is not based on anything close to the truth. But I don't believe that we can raise the minimum wage given the fact that our job situation is so horrible. We have a tough economy. We don't have enough jobs, and raising the minimum wage, anybody that has ever studied economics, and I study economics at Notre Dame, I, I can tell you that Thank raising you. the minimum wage will kill jobs. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll try to speak loudly, and maybe we can get this fixed. I don't know if we have any technical people in the room who could try to uh, work on this. Uh, the next question is, have either of you ever voted on term limits, and what are your views on term limits? And this will be answered first by Rod Drabinsky. I am completely in support of term limits. If I think that if eight years is enough for the President of the United States, I think it's certainly more than enough for legislators in Springfield. We in, we in Illinois have legislators who have been down there for 42 years, 30 years, 20 years, these people have corrupted our system, and I think we need to get, show them the door. That's why I support term limits, and I would push to get term limits here in Illinois. Thank you. Can we use the mic on the radio? Can we use the mic? We're still getting them on the broadcast. All right. Sam Healy? Um, I think there is a key difference between my opponent and me as it pertains to term limits. I've always been a vocal advocate of term limits. One of the very first things I did when I was Avon Township Supervisor was pass a resolution supporting term limits. The very first thing that Mr. Drabinsky did on the library board was vote against term limits for the library. So I find his comment somewhat disingenuous when he sits here and advocates about the need for, for term limits when he, his own actions, have spoken to say he's against term limits. But he sits here before you now and tells you that he's for term limits. My actions speak for myself. I have been consistently on record as supporting term limits. I even voted to support term limits at the township level. So I think there is a stark difference here on this issue between my opponent and me. Okay, thank you. The next question will be answered first by Sam Yingling. And the question is, um, how will you deal with uh, tax cuts and where would you make the cuts and how would they affect the most vulnerable community members? This is, this is an issue that is going to require very vigorous debate. I've always, been a, I've always been a strong advocate for government consolidation. When you look at the billions and billions of dollars that are tied up in duplicative uh, governmental bodies that can be released for education, for um, human services, that's, that's an area we need to look at. And the legislature, and quite frankly, we as the people of Illinois, if we want to fund all of these programs, we're going to have to look at funding, we're going to have to look at levels of funding, which may include government consolidation, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that um, we need to start having a serious and educated dialogue about that issue moving forward. And that is something that I think can easily be done. There's already legislation that's sitting on the table waiting for action to take place. And I think that can resolve a lot of our funding issues. Thank you. Rod Drabinsky. Again, <clears throat> I believe that as far as the cuts to the budget that need to be made, I think that politicians in Springfield that sold us that tax hike back in 2011 have to live with the promises that they made. I believe that the budget lines that were increased after that tax hike was 
was, was passed, I think every budget line needs to go back to 2011 because those people should not have expected to have that money past 2015 in the first place. That money should go back to the people where it belongs, back to the taxpayers. You know, again, we have a difference here. My opponent says one thing, he does another. He says that he's for fiscal responsibility, he doesn't want the tax hike to stay in place. But again, he voted for a budget in 2015 that spends more money than it takes in. He says that he's for ter term limits. But he went down to Springfield, he did nothing on term limits, not one peep. He's been in office now for two years, and he didn't do anything to support term limits. He says one thing, he doesn't Thank other. you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Rod Drabinsky, and the question is, if elected, will you vote for the Equal Rights Amendment? First, I want to say that I support wholeheartedly women's rights. My wife was a public defender in my courtroom. We met each other fighting each other in court. My daughter is my whole world to me, and I want her to have every opportunity that I've had in life. But I will tell you that I don't feel comfortable with ERA as it is currently drafted because the ERA can be interpreted by courts to force women to go into, be listed into the selective service. I think that the ERA as it currently is drafted can be interpreted by courts to do all sorts of horrible things to women and not help women's rights. So I will fight in Springfield for women's rights, but I would not vote for the ERA as it currently stands. Thank you. Sam Yingling? I think this is another issue that my opponent and I disagree on very substantially. Um, I am a, oh, we're back online. I am a co-sponsor of the ERA, and I think that it's a very important amendment. I think that for far too long, there have been too many discrepancies based on gender in not only our country, but our state. And I think that it's time, I think the ERA is overdue. I think it's time that we put something in writing that allows women to be treated as equally as men and make sure that they have access to all the same rights that men do. And although my opponent sits here and says he's gonna fight for women's issues, I mean, this is, this is a huge issue. The ERA is a major issue. And this is something that um, grew out of the women's rights movement. This is something that is very pro-woman. And, and I think that there is a lot more good um, that will come out of it, and, and as opposed to this fear-mongering um, surrounding the ERA that all these terrible things are gonna happen. Thank I fully you. support the ERA. Thank you. Um, our final question before we go to the closing statements is, um, it will be answered first by Rod Drabinsky, and I, I'm sorry, by Sam Yingling. And the question is, what in your past experience makes you uniquely qualified to be the state representative in the 62nd district? You know, I think for far too long people, I, there's been far too much partisan politics in this country. I know everyone is fed up with it, I'm fed up with it. And I even get flack from my own party because I'm willing to work with Republicans. But you know what, sometimes Republicans have really good ideas, sometimes Democrats have really good ideas, and vice versa. And this is something that I think we've really lost touch of, is needing to build a bipartisanship approach to governing. There, I, I'm fed up with gridlock. I mean, I'm sure the majority of you are fed up with gridlock. I am not opposed to working with people across party lines. And that's something that I pride myself on. Um, three pieces of major legislation that I've worked on in the past 18 months have been with Republican co-sponsors. We need more people who are willing to stand up and say enough of the partisan politics, we're putting people before party, and I have consistently represented that in my actions, and that is what we are going to need moving forward in the upcoming years. Thank you. Rod Drabinsky? <clears throat> I am proud to say that I've developed, I've worked hard to earn the reputation of being a tough, fair, and ethical prosecutor with the Lake County State's Attorney's Office over my entire career. I've worked hard, not only working across the aisle with defense attorneys, fighting them in court, but also treating them with respect. Like I said before, my wife was the public defender in my courtroom before when we first met, and now we're married. The rest is history. But the fact of the matter is, I know how to work across both sides. But again, what we see in the answer from my opponent is he says one thing and he does another. He says he believes in bipartisanship but he votes with Mike Madigan, the leader of the Democratic Party, 98 plus percent of the time. 
He says one thing, and he does another, and it happens over and over and over again in his record. Thank you. We'll now go to the one-minute closing statements, and Rod Drabinsky will speak first, and again, one minute. I'm running because we don't have proper representation here in the 62nd District. We have an incumbent who says one thing and does another. He says he cares about property taxes, but he doesn't, hasn't done anything in Springfield. He has passed no legislation that has given anybody any real relief on their property tax bills. The only issues that he has ever sponsored a bill on that have ever passed were issues dealing with insects, the heroin task force, which still hasn't produced a report yet for the public to read, and I believe on first Saturday of the month, which it was declared get, eat local. I mean, he went down to Springfield saying that he wanted to fight for lower taxes, for more jobs, but he hasn't done any of that since he's been in Springfield. I will go down to Springfield and I will fight for the hardworking taxpayers of the 62nd District to give them the represent, representation they deserve. Thank you. Sammy Yingling? I think the clear difference between my opponent and I is that my opponent is full of talking points. Sam Yingling does one thing, says one thing, but does another. I have a very extensive uh, voting history. All you need to do is go on to ilga.gov and you can see it. Um, I've done an enormous amount of work with property taxes, and I'm somebody who is going to go out and fight the battles. I'm not somebody who's gonna sit up here at a table and give you one talking point after another. I'm gonna tell you what you need to hear, not what I think you want to hear. And that is the difference here between my opponent and me. I have fought very hard for the past 18 months in Springfield to get the state back on track. We've paid down, we've gone from $10 billion of unpaid bills to roughly four. We've reformed a pension system. We've balanced a budget, um, which is contrary to what Mr. Drabinsky has said. And um, so we need more than talking points. We need substance, we need action. And unfortunately, Mr. Drabinsky has neither of those. I have, I have a solid record, I have answers, I have substance. More than happy thank to talk you. to you more. Thank you. I'd like to thank our candidates, Sam Yingling and Rod Drabinsky, for their participation in our forum this evening. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> our next se segment of the forum is dedicated to the two candidates who are running for the Lake County um, Board. And they are uh, Democrat uh, John Wiley and Republican Jeff Werfel. They are running for the 6th District. And as a reminder or introduction, uh, a short uh, description of what the county board members do uh, is uh, as follows. The Lake County Board has 21 elected members that represent a specific geographic district. The board approves the budget and all financial matters, as well as ordinances affecting all county government departments. The board has standing committees that hold meetings during the two weeks prior to the county board meeting. So uh, whichever gentleman you elect to this position, he will be doing that job for you and representing you on the Lake County Board. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters and WRLR and all the other sponsors, Mano a Mano, uh, for allowing us to appear here tonight. Uh, it's a great honor for me, I'm sure it is for Jeff as well, uh, to be able to talk directly to people and uh, to uh, have that broadcast over the radio as well. When thinking about an opening statement, I started thinking about why it is I'm running for this office. We are now represented by Pat Carey, who's been on the board coming up uh, uh, six years. She had been on the uh, Village Board of Grays Lake for 12 years before that uh, and is retiring. She's been a great leader in the, uh, on the county board. We we're going to have to replace that leadership. And after she asked me if I would consider running, I thought about it quite a bit, and I decided that I think that I have the right kind of experience to replace that leadership. Uh, I've been a lawyer for 30 years. I've uh, exhibited tremendous leadership skills in, uh, in my practice, and uh, I think that I have the ideas and the work ethic to, um, to do just that. So I want to be part of the solutions to the problems that we have here in Lake County, um, and uh, I want to move Lake County forward, and uh, that's why I'm running for office. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Werfel, you have up to one and a half minutes for an opening statement. Thank you. 
Um, I'd like to thank all the organizers also for putting this on uh, and for everyone here for coming. Um, I'm Jeff Werfel. I'm running for the uh, county board in District 6. I've lived in Lake County and Grays Lake since 1998. I have uh, two children currently in Grays Lake Public Schools. They're actually here tonight, uh, Emily and Chase. Um, I've represented the majority of this district, District 6, as an elected official, uh, a Grays Lake Village trustee, uh, for over 11 years now. Uh, I've been actively involved in the rest of the district uh, during my time for three and a half years working for the former uh, state representative for this area. So uh, over that time, I've become quite familiar with uh, issues and concerns of this county board district. Uh, like our effective, as John had mentioned, and uh, soon to be retiring county board member Pat Carey, uh, I believe I've acquired the necessary skills and experience uh, to sec uh, successfully represent uh, the district at the county level um, uh, by first serving uh, at the local municipal level as a village trustee. I also have 20 years of uh, business e experience as a uh, marketing consultant, and I possess a bachelor's degree from Georgetown University and an MBA from Loyola. My priorities are economic development and job creation, reducing our traffic congestion, keeping our budget balanced without raising taxes, uh, preserving and improving the county's natural environment and our quality of life, and creating responsive and cost-efficient government. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Jeff Werfel will answer the first question first. And the question is, this area faces a serious shortage of affordable housing. Lake County's investment in affordable housing is not consistent. As a board member, how would you approach this problem? You have one minute. Um, I'm, uh, I'm supportive of uh, affordable housing uh, and uh, would uh, like us to um, uh, take a look at how much is being uh, committed budgetarily uh, to it and uh, uh, basically uh, study it and move forward. In Grays Lake, as a village trustee, uh, we've uh, uh, added housing, assisted living type of housing, which does have a, 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 a which also has a low income um, uh, aspect uh, to it. Uh, so the, I do have experience uh, in this uh, realm from that standpoint. Um, and uh, the, the question itself is, uh, is, is basically assuming that not enough uh, money is being uh, budgeted uh, towards it. There's multiple uh, agencies and levels of government that are involved with this. I would want to work with those uh, other levels of government and other agencies to uh, work a, a plan and a study going forward to figure out a best course of action. Thank you. Mr. Wiley? Thank you. I think for um, affordable housing, we need to have some uh, innovative ideas, <clears throat> excuse me, um, such as uh, changing some of the building codes so that we could have perhaps smaller housing uh, that would be interim for people to move into. Uh, once they can afford to move out, they'll move out to uh, bigger, uh, bigger places. Uh, I think one of the problems that we have here is our high tax rate, which makes uh, housing um, unaffordable for a lot of people. We need some tax relief on that. Uh, and uh, uh, if we you know, reduce taxes, real estate taxes, that'll make rent slower, that'll make uh, housing costs slower, and uh, more people will be able to afford it. I think we also should look to the state and federal uh, agencies uh, or governments for, um, uh, for grants uh, to, uh, to help us with that as well. Thank you. The next question will be answered first by Mr. Wiley, and the question is, what can be done to spur economic development in Lake County? Well, that's one of the issues that I'm really running on, is economic development so that we can have some tax relief here. I've, I've walked around the county, uh, or around the district, excuse me, uh, for many months now, I've knocked on over 5,000 doors and talked to thousands of people, and the number one issue that people raise is, uh, taxes. People want tax relief. And the way that we can do that on the county level is by spurring economic development. And I've been focusing on a couple of different areas. Uh, green green uh, jobs and green technology and green energy jobs are the fastest growing areas of the economy. We can, uh, we can focus on those here in Lake County, uh, creating jobs, creating tax relief, uh, and expanding our tax base. One other area that I've been focusing on also is promotion of local foods. We import about 90% of our food into Illinois. 
uh, and into our uh, county. And all that tax money goes out of, um, out of state. We should be promoting local foods here. We can take that industry from about $40 million to Thank about a billion and a half dollars. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Werfel? Um, yes. Uh, um, uh, as John had said, uh, and as uh, somebody that's run in a number of elections and been an elected official for uh, the past 11 years, uh, taxes are always the number one issue with folks. Uh, as I say, when I'm walking door to door and talking to folks, uh, none of our property taxes, uh, nobody has a low property tax bill uh, in, uh, in this area. However, there's a lot of things that can be done from an economic development standpoint to try to improve that. We are at a bit of a disadvantage because of the larger state uh, economic environment. And uh, we have uh, over the border in Kenosha and Wisconsin uh, a very aggressive, uh, uh, a very aggressive uh, competitor uh, for jobs. Uh, we've lost a lot of business here in Lake County to Kenosha actually over uh, the past few years. Uh, the solution is, is aggressive public-private uh, uh, partnership. We have Lake County partners and the, the different levels of government, both at the, the uh, county and the state and the federal, uh, to, uh, sorry I'm cut off, to work together to keep businesses Stop. and attract businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first uh, by Mr. Werfel. And it's really a two-part question dealing with traffic. Uh, the, the question is, where do you stand on the 120 bypass, uh, including environmental impact and impact on businesses? And are you for or against extending Route 53? Um, I, support the, uh, I, I support the current recommendations uh, that, that have been accepted uh, by the uh, Route 53 Blue Ribbon Commission. Uh, I think that was the right way to go about uh, uh, basically getting uh, agreement on, uh, on an a issue that uh, has literally been around for 50 years as to whether or not build 53 or not. Um, the uh, recommendations of the Blue Ribbon Commission and now the subsequent committees uh, that uh, are made up of the, the Tollway Authority, the state, uh, county representation and various uh, interested uh, and uh, stakeholder groups in the business and environmental realm are trying to make it happen now uh, and local municipalities such as Grays Lake and the rest in this district. Um, it was the right way to go in order to come to a compromise, a classic of, uh, a classic of uh, politics that way. Uh, and I think we'll, uh, I'm in support of the solution that's, uh, that's being tried to move forward by that group. Thank Thanks. you. Mr. Wiley? Thank you. We do need some relief on Route 120. Anybody who's driven that uh, any time in the last uh, 10 or 15 years knows that that's a, a mess. Uh, and I am in favor of uh, some sort of bypass uh, to relieve uh, traffic congestion there uh, in Grays Lake. Um, as far as uh, Route 53 goes, I applaud the uh, work that the uh, Blue Ribbon Commission did. Uh, they brought together a lot of different uh, entities, uh, various disparate uh, interests. Um, frankly, I'm not totally convinced that it's uh, going to provide any uh, traffic uh, congestion relief. Um, there are still a lot of issues. How are we going to pay for it? Um, the highway, the tollway authority wants us to come up with 450 million to 600 million dollars. Uh, the recommendations are through raising taxes or raising uh, tolls. Uh, pretty much across the board, which I don't think anybody wants to pay for. Um, if, the, uh, if the road is going to go ahead, if the Tollway Authority decides to go ahead with it, I'm su Thank would you. support it only if it's built with the environmental okay. protection. Thank you. Um, the next question will be answered first by Mr. Wiley. Uh, the question is, how will you stay in touch with the voters of the district? I'm in favor of broadcasting the uh, county board meetings, including the committee meetings. Uh, I will uh, also be sending out emails and newsletters uh, to uh, folks and holding uh, periodic meetings at coffee shops and people's homes. Uh, my phone number will always be listed. My email address will always be listed. I'm, I'm available. I'm in the phone book. Anybody can talk to me. I've been out talking to people all over my district and uh, I fully support transparency in government, uh, and we'll continue that. Thank you. Mr. Werfel? Um, I've, I've always uh, tried to be uh, accessible and available uh, through, uh, I guess you would say, all of the communication channels of, 
that are available nowadays, which is quite a few. Uh, but uh, as, an, uh, as a village trustee in Grays Lake, I get emails all the time from residents with various issues, concerns, uh, and uh, I think I have a reputation uh, for responding to them quickly. Uh, I also spend quite a bit of time out in the community talking to folks. Uh, as a county board member, I uh, have the uh, ability to uh, uh, send out uh, uh, the electronic newsletters, uh, which all of the current county board members have. I'm looking forward, if I'm elected, to, to having that vehicle uh, for communication. Um, all, uh, uh, I'm certainly in favor of uh, all uh, public um, uh, broadcast of, uh, uh, and communication over the web or, uh, uh, or over broadcast of uh, meetings. Uh, that's what we do in Grays Lake. Uh, it uh, helped a lot with our village Thank board you. meetings. Thanks. Thank you. The next question will be answered first by Mr. Werfel, and the question is, what new ideas could you bring to the Lake County Board, and which would you implement first? Uh, well, my particular area of, uh, uh, one particular area of passion for me, uh, and a uh, record that I'm very proud of uh, within Grays Lake is, uh, uh, it's uh, what I call better, faster, cheaper. Uh, in the private sector, it's not a new idea at all. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, government can be made much more uh, cost efficient uh, through a lot, of, uh, a lot of practices, best practices that have already happened in the private sector for the past 30 or 40 years, but they're relatively new in the public sector. Uh, and there's a lot of things that can be done. In Grays Lake, we've had tremendous success. Uh, we've uh, been able to uh, keep our tax rate for the village itself at a, a steady uh, rate and we've been able to cut our costs and still deliver a high level of service. Uh, that's, uh, it's uh, also something that I have experience in in the uh, private sector. I was a management consultant that specialized in that kind of uh, stuff on the private sector. Uh, so that's what I would want to bring to the county board as one Thank of my you. first issues. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Wiley? Thank you. There are a couple of things that I would uh, want to work on uh, as soon as I'm elected. Uh, the first thing would be to, uh, working with, uh, to work with Lake County partners to uh, promote economic development. And uh, the one thing, as I was mentioning before, that I would hope to promote would be the local food system. I was sort of cut off there in my time. Uh, what I was saying on the earlier question was we could take that industry from about $40 million a year now to about a billion and a half dollar a year industry. That would throw off a lot of taxes, create a lot of really good jobs, uh, and provide some good tax relief. I'd also want to promote um, tax uh, transparency, and I would support the effort uh, of the county to bring the assessor's uh, functions away from the townships and into the county and centralize them. Uh, so I would work on that. And finally, uh, we just have a brand new sustainability director in, in Lake County who's doing great things, and I would want to work to uh, make sure that uh, she, her office, had the uh, proper uh, funding for that and also Thank explore. You. Thank you. Uh, okay, the uh, next question will be answered first by Mr. Wiley, and the question is, what do you think are the environmental challenges in Lake County? There's a number of environmental challenges. Uh, one, we have, uh, most people are not aware of this, but in the, the last uh, report card from the American uh, Heart Association, I believe it was, we have an F in air quality, and I think that that is largely due uh, to the coal plant over in Waukegan. So I would, I have proposed that we put together a commission, something like the uh, Blue Ribbon Commission that dealt with Route 53, to bring all the parties together, uh, all the interested parties, and that would be the company, uh, NRG, the new owners of it, um, the uh, environmental community, the, the uh, local uh, uh, unions and the uh, representatives of the people who are working there to work out some kind of a solution to, to that issue. Um, we also have uh, some water issues in the western part of the uh, county. Uh, we need to make sure that the wells out there are charged, um, so we need to work on that as well. And there are various other things as well, but uh, those are the two that come to mind right now. Thank you. Mr. Werfel? Um, uh, similar to John, those are actually uh, a couple of things that, uh, that I have talked with, uh, with folks when we talk about environmental issues uh, also. I, I wanted to add on to that. Um, the uh, uh, Forest Preserve has done a great job in terms of uh, uh, setting aside open space 
uh, for uh, the county's residents. Um, the uh, point of, uh, of, quote, buying up land uh, and expanding this, uh, those holdings has kind of reached its, uh, has reached its limit. Uh, but the next logical phase with a lot of the uh, open space that's currently available is, uh, is the restoration of it. Uh, and I, I, what I support in this realm as a forest preserve uh, commissioner, which is part of our role too as county board members, uh, would be to do a large strategic plan uh, to literally figure out uh, the different forest preserve holdings all over the county, what we would want to do with those particular holdings. Some of them could be used for recreation, some of them for restoration. Uh, all of them would be uh, hopefully connected. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Mr. Werfel, and the question is, are there any county departments that you feel are unnecessary or that could be consolidated? And if so, what would you propose? Um, I, uh, I don't necessarily feel that any departments right now are uh, unnecessary or redundant. Uh, I, I, I'm not ready to just kind of answer that uh, outright, uh, but as I was talking about in an earlier answer, what I, uh, what I do feel needs to be done uh, is, is an audit and uh, an investigation into, again, how can we do things in the delivery of the basic services that the county is responsible for? How can you do it better, faster, cheaper? And if one of the realms uh, or one of the uh, solutions to that ends up being a consolidation of a particular department uh, into another or uh, uh, the changing of responsibilities, the leveraging of technology, uh, for instance, uh, and other uh, uh, other solution, uh, uh, other uh, tactical uh, solutions such as that, then I would be all for it. Uh, I think it needs to be done. Uh, these type of things have to be done uh, with a game plan, and they have to be done the right way. Um, it, it's uh, the devil is Thank always you. in the details, is what I've Thank heard you. over my 11 years. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. I guess I'd have to agree with Jeff on that one, that um, this is an issue that uh, would probably uh, need study. Um, I think that you probably would need to have study of this on a, on a regular basis so that you know that the government is working efficiently. Um, one thing that I mentioned earlier was a, a uh, proposal that um, the assessor's office be brought into uh, the county, on the county level, and I fully support that sort of thing. Uh, I think that we can work with uh, local governments uh, better uh, so that we have shared service agreements, uh, joint purchasing agreements, and so forth. Uh, and I think those are the kind of things that we should be looking at. If it comes to, uh, to be that it's a good idea to consolidate departments, well, we'll study that issue when, uh, when it comes up. Okay, thank you. This uh, is the final question before we go to the closing statements. And the question which will be answered first by Mr. Wiley is, what do you think is the biggest, and this is in quotes, fix that needs to take place in District 6? I'm sorry, I didn't, the, the biggest fix? The, the, the biggest fix, I guess, what's the biggest problem that needs to the be biggest addressed? Problem? Well, as I mentioned before, in, in knocking on uh, doors all over the, uh, the district, the number one issue is, is tax relief. People need tax relief. And I have uh, uh, proposed uh, expansion and promotion of local foods. Uh, I have proposed uh, uh, promotion of uh, green energy jobs, uh, promotion of green technology. We're in a great position here between two huge markets in Milwaukee and in Chicago. Uh, people are clamoring for local foods. We're sending all of our money out, sta out of state. We could keep that here. That would provide serious tax relief. It would provide tremendous amount of jobs, and not just farming jobs, but transportation and processing and sales and nutritionists uh, and so on, and it would make Lake County a place that people would want to go to rather than just driving through on the way up to Wisconsin. We could create a Lake County patriotism by uh, promoting that type of business, and it would provide serious tax relief, and uh, I think that's the biggest issue. And Thank you. Thank you. Well, now, uh, Mr. Werfel. Thank you. Um, the, the biggest fix is property taxes. Uh, that it, and uh, the answer to it ultimately, uh, our, our problem is, is that we have such a disparity between uh, the reliance on residential property taxes versus business property taxes. The, the long-term solution, ultimate solution to it is uh, expanding, diversifying uh, our uh, business tax base here in, the, here in the district. And the way to do that is through the partnerships that we talked about. 
had some good success in Gray's Lake by doing exactly that. Uh, the FedEx facility that was recently opened a few years ago, things like that. They come, though, through partnerships of like the levels of government, the businesses themselves, and third-party groups like uh, Lake County Partners. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that would be a main focus for, quote, uh, the fix that we are talking about. Also being more efficient as a governmental entity, as we've already discussed, has a, uh, has a big impact. Gray's Lake, these past two years, uh, it, we've not increased our costs. Uh, it, last year we took a vote to leave Thank our, you. our Thank you. operating uh, budget the same Thank level you. as previous year. Um, we'll now go to our one minute closing statements and Mr. Werfel, uh, you have one minute for a closing statement. Um, I just want to uh, Again, thank the organizers and all the folks that have come here to uh, and given me a few minutes and given John a few minutes to talk about uh, the county and its issues. And, uh, you know, today people are struggling uh, to stay employed, become employed in this district, keep their homes, pay their property taxes. Uh, and uh, we all have to, uh, in these times of sacrifice, we all have to use uh, uh, common sense approaches in our households to, uh, to be able to make ends meet. And uh, all of us as taxpayers expect government to respect that sacrifice uh, by managing its fiscal affairs uh, with the same creativity and urgency. Uh, I'm proud of what we've been able to do in Grays Lake. We've got a great record there. Uh, no debt uh, in the town. We've kept our service levels high, and we haven't had to increase taxes in order to do it. But we've had to do a lot of hard management, better, faster, cheaper, as I mentioned. So that's what I do as a village trustee. That's what I would do as a county board member to address these issues. I look forward to... Uh, Thank you. I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wiley? Thank you, and again, thank you for the sponsors for letting us uh, be here, and thank you in the audience for uh, listening to us. We need to go beyond the status quo when we're facing or dealing with the issues that are facing the county. Um, we need proactive thinking to solve these hard issues of tax relief, economic development, job creation, environmental protection, traffic congestion. I've articulated a vision and ideas throughout this campaign to work on these issues. Uh, one example was the local foods and green jobs initiatives that I was proposing. Another was the uh, commission to um, deal with the, uh, with the coal plant in Waukegan. So who's better prepared here to take uh, Pat's place? I've been a lawyer for 30 years. I work on complex issues and finding solutions and creative solutions, often on a bipartisan basis every single day. Uh, I've been in every precinct, every neighborhood in this, uh, in this district. I've talked to hundreds, if not thousands, of people about their concerns. Uh, I understand the diversity and the complexities of the various neighborhoods and communities in this area. Thank you. And I ask for your support in your vote on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank our candidates, uh, Jeff Werfel and John Wiley, for their participation tonight. And let's give my hand. The candidates that are before you now are the ones who are running for the uh, contested offices in Lake County. There are the candidates for the county clerk, the county sheriff, and the county treasurer. Lake County clerk position is um, the chief election authority. Uh, the county clerk provides a myriad of voter and candidate services and administers Lake County elections in a fair, unbiased, accurate, efficient, and timely manner. The clerk's office also maintains vital records such as birth, marriage, and death, public filings, tax and real estate services, as well as uh, records the Lake County board proceedings. So those are the functions of the uh, Lake County clerk. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to talk to all of you tonight. The county clerk's office does have four major areas of responsibility, elections, vital records, property tax extensions, and also serves as the official clerk for the Lake County board. Um, I'd like to tell you uh, my background, which I think qualifies me to, uh, to become the next Lake County Clerk. For the last 20 years, I have worked in the Lake County State's Attorney's Office, the first five years as a criminal prosecutor. The last 15 uh, years, I have been in the Civil Division, and one of my major responsibilities was to be the legal representative for the Lake County Clerk and the Clerk's Office with a major focus on elections and vital records. Prior to that, I spent 16 years working for the American Medical Association, 
uh, in communications, working with the policy-making bodies. I spent four years in Washington, D.C. as a lobbyist, and in my last um, responsibility, I headed a division and managed a staff and a budget. I have uh, a degree in journalism, an MBA from Northwestern, and my law degree is from Loyola. And I think all of those things combined give me a unique um, experience to um, be able to serve as the next county clerk. Thank you. Janet Kilkelly, you have a minute and a half for an opening statement. You know, I'm a light like you. I care about Lake County. Now, I come from the largest and most diverse community in Lake County, Waukegan, Illinois. I'm born and bred. And I am prepared and ready to serve all of Lake County. I'm Janet Kilkelly, and I'm running to be your next Lake County clerk. Now, as your county clerk, there's a number of things I'd like to do. But first and foremost, be assured I will protect your right to vote. Everyone qualified to vote will have that opportunity under my administration. In addition, we need to look at the core competencies of the office. Is there the right software in place for the tax calculations? Is the software in place to protect your vital records? You know, in this day and age of, you know, identity theft, that's extremely important. So now, it's been 20 years since there's been a change, and you can have the same old, same old, or you can have me. I'm a breath of fresh air. I have the background to manage the office on a daily basis and for you. So I look forward to representing you as your next Lake County clerk. So I need your vote on November 4th. And I assure you, you will not regret it. Thank you. The first question will be answered first by Janet Kilkelly. And uh, it's kind of a two-part question. It is, um, List the issues not addressed by the long-term current clerk, and what changes do you think need to be made in the clerk's office? You have one minute. Okay. List the issues not addressed by the current long-term clerk, and what changes do you think need to be made in the clerk's office? Okay, so a couple of the uh, issues I think we need to take a look at is that I think that we can do um, improve the website. I think there's a lot of information. I also think that there's um, information that we don't need there. I don't think that there's any reason that we need to have 20 years of minutes and agendas of the Lake County Board. So now that's not to say it shouldn't be available, but there are modern archaic, you know, archive ways to store that. Right now, we are paying for all that information to be on the website. And I think that's one way we can save money. The other thing is, is that I, I, from what I've heard from a number of communities, especially Beach Park, that there was a t problem with the tax calculations on the TIF districts. So that was not going to be addressed. It is now being addressed. And it'll, it's going to be the problem and the solution for the next clerk to take care of in the, in the after November 4th. So those are two things that we actually need to Thank do. Thank you. Thank you. Carla Wyckoff. Uh, first of all, I would uh, base my um, activities for change on what I consider a solid foundation of efficiency and transparency in the office. Um, one, one potential change in the future, um, if the uh, legislature expands what for this election is a limited election day registration, um, if after the session the legislature expands that and continues it, it will necessitate a significant change in equipment and systems that we will have to initiate in the clerk's office, and I would want to be prepared for that. We will um, have to address uh, certain TIF districts have raised some issues. Um, it's not uh, related to the software. It deals with um, how the um, equalized assessed value is calculated, and it's based on an interpretation of the statute, which I would spend a significant amount of time talking to the TIF districts, working with the state's attorney's office, and basing if there is a change, and, and I'm not sure that there needs to be, it, it needs to be based Thank on you. a change in the Thank legislation. You. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Carla Wyckoff, and the question is, 
Given that this is a partisan race, how would you ensure that your office would remain nonpartisan while overseeing elections? That is such uh, an important question. I'm glad someone asked it. It really is a priority. Um, while, while we do need to choose um, how, we, uh, how we run, we, we must run as either <clears throat> um, one of the parties or, or an independent, but immediately um, after the election, it does become a nonpartisan office. My obligation, and one that I have fulfilled for the last 20 years in the state's attorney's office, is to simply um, I take an oath to comply with the law. And it would be my um, commitment and my priority to uh, comply with the law, uh, apply it consistently to everyone, um, and treat everyone fairly and keep the office uh, as transparent as possible. Thank you. Janet Kilkelly? It is so important to be nonpartisan in this office. And I have the background, I believe, that it can really fulfill that. I have over 35 years of customer service in the private sector, so I have not been a government employee. In addition to that, I've also served 20 years in public service. I have been 20 years of serving the community in nonpartisan offices. Number one, I've been 13 years a Waukegan Park District Commissioner. So I know that, that you are not partisan in that. In addition, I've served six, five years for the Waukegan Port Authority as a, an appointee of the Waukegan, I mean, of the point, appointee of the governor. And I've also spent four years as a Waukegan Township trustee. So my service in the community, I know how to treat people, I know what people expect from an office that's heavily administrative, and that I am prepared now to make sure that that office is always nonpartisan and is serving the community. Thank you. The next question will be answered first by Janet Kilkelly. The question is, Lake County has a significant immigrant population, many of whom are new citizens and new voters, but turnout is often low. As county clerk, how would you reach out to these new voters who have limited experience with our electoral process? I think that's a great question, and I think we really need to address that. One of my initiatives that I have, and I put it on my website, is to make sure that when the new uh, citizen uh, gets sworn in, to be immediately outside the door to register them to vote. Not only to be there and to register them to vote, to have a mock-up of what you would have to do so that they could become comfortable with that process of our American way. That's the democratic way. So I think that that would really help make sure that these people feel comfortable in the process and are engaged in the process. And I think more education is better than none. So thank you. Carla Wyckoff. Yes, that also hits on one of my priorities that I would like to work on uh, if I'm elected, and that is to increase voter turnout, not only for new voters um, and immigrants, but uh, throughout the county. Um, and several ways that I would approach that is to work through civic organizations, community groups, um, and it would certainly include organizations that, um, that new citizens would be associated with and get them involved in the process, encourage them to become election judges uh, and, and teach them uh, how the robust internet um, system that the clerk's office already has, how they can use that. Another um, way that I think would be a significant help is to work through the schools, particularly the high schools, and I would work with the regional superintendent of schools to increase participation and increase the number of uh, programs in the high schools where we use the, the students actually as election judges. Because if you teach them in Thank high you. school, they will continue Thank that you. good habit of voting. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Carla Wyckoff. Uh, the question is, uh, what are your thoughts on same-day voter registration on, or election day voter registration? Uh, for this particular election, um, at the end of the legislative session in June, the legislature did pass um, an amendment to the election code which extends grace period uh, voter registration up through and including election day. Uh, at, at, 
historically it ended on Saturday, but now it will extend through the weekend and Monday and Tuesday. But it is only for the uh, four permanent polling places uh, in Lake County, which are the, f the three largest uh, communities, Waukegan, North Chicago, and Gurney. So it is the law, and we will be doing it um, at this uh, election. There will be uh, voter registration at those permanent polling places on election day. And as I mentioned previously, I anticipate that after this election is over, the legislature may very well address that again. They will either extend it into the future or they'll decide not to. And I want to be prepared in the event that they do extend it so that the clerk's office can respond um, appropriately to um, this election day activity. Thank you. Janet Kilkelly? I think it's terrific. I think whatever we can do to pull the vote out of people is what we need to do. I think to have between 12 to 15 percent of our population get out and vote is abominable. So if, we, if that gets people out, I'm all for it. I mean, there's also other initiatives that I want to do besides same day. And I think that we need to encourage all our young people to get out, you know, to make sure that we start training them when they're in high school, coordinate again with the schools so that they get this idea that they can vote for life. This is something that you do your whole life. So I wanna do that with the young people. I wanna make sure that we retain our senior citizens. Our senior citizens are in flux right now. They're moving out of their homes, they're going to uh, senior assisted living, and at that time, they don't always think that they change the registration. So I think we need to make sure that there's something in place to go around and check that to make sure that our seniors, who are our biggest voters, always have that opportunity. I'd also like to make CLC a stop. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next question will be answered first by Janet Kilkelly. The question is, how will you uh, secure voting data with vote by mail and perhaps with online voting in the near future? How would I secure data? Well, number one, I am not an insider. So that, that question is, you have to know what's going on right there at the moment. So I'm not an insider. But what I am bringing to the table is over 35 years of customer service experience. And about, I also know a little bit about how to you know, work computers and what have you. We all have that. But I have a good eye. I, I worked at Abbott. I worked in customer service. I streamlined one of their processes for them. I think that that eye that I have is going to be really a good asset to what we can do to protect the records of the clerks. I don't have a reaction to the online voting because we don't have it yet. Uh, we do have, for the first time beginning in July, on July 1st of this year, we have online registration. I think there are about 340 people uh, to date who have uh, registered online. And we do have a very active vote by mail program. In fact, the uh, county clerk's office already has that program in place. Uh, we've, I think the clerk's office has already mailed out 22,000 ballots um, in response to this very active program to encourage people to vote by mail. Um, the clerk's office is required to uh, compile that data, capture it, report it to the state so that the parties, the political parties and the candidates can use it. Um, it's already a very robust, active program, and I'm sure it will continue uh, in the future. We've seen an enormous increase in that activity in this election alone. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered first by Carla Wyckoff. The question is, would it ever be possible to split uh, election judge responsibilities into two shifts over the long election day? That's a great question. I'm not sure I have a, a good answer for it. But I, I will say that um, the, the clerk's office relies on probably about 1,600 volunteers around the county to serve as election judges and site managers, and we could not um, have a, a voting system without it. Uh, we, we rely on them. They, uh, the clerk's office spends a lot of time training them and keeping them updated on all of the changes. Um, I, certainly, I certainly would entertain the notion of um, s splitting it. I would have to look at uh, 
how they would be the most effective and the most consistent in uh, applying a lot of the technical requirements that will happen that happen on election day. Um, it's it, as the election code gets more and more complex, and as we may have registration in the uh, polling places along with um, voting. Uh, we may have to continue with um, people continuing for the entire day. Thank I don't you. know. Thank you. Janet Kilkelly? I'm not sure that two shifts is really necessary, to tell you the truth. I've been meeting so many election judges out there. They, they're, number one, they're concerned about uh, who's going to be next, and I assure them it'll be me. But uh, they don't have a concern about the 12-hour days or 14-hour days. They all seem to embrace it and are satisfied with it. I've never, nobody has complained about uh, being there for the long day. They just know it's part of the process. And they're really, uh, what can I say? They, they really enjoy being part of the election day. I've never seen such a more energetic crowd than the election judges. They're, they're proud to say what they are and they look forward to it. And I tell them I look forward to working with them as well. Okay, uh, we're getting to the point where we need to uh, do closing statements, and uh, so, um, but there, there was another question that I think uh, merits answering, so uh, I'll ask it, and then, um, and then we'll go to closing statements. Uh, the question is, do you have any ideas on how to increase voter turnout? And that will be answered by uh, Janet Kilkelly first. We kind of touched a little bit about this before, but I do have a number of initiatives. I have initiatives for young voters. Those are the ones that are in high school. I'd like them to, number one, I'd like to sponsor a poster contest among all the high schools in Lake County through the art departments and award a $1,000 uh, scholarship to the school who has the winning poster. And that poster then will be used, of course, the so $1,000 is privately funded. The poster will be used for promoting voting and promoting registration in the high schools. So I think that's a terrific way to utilize two things, being a civic servant and also the art department. I also want to make sure that perhaps the other um, initiative would be to have a registration drive. Make sure everybody at the high schools, uh, there's somebody there who can register the, the students, and then to uh, do a contest among them, just kind of like a little nice competition. Thank you. Thank you. Carla Wyckoff. Janet and I uh, agree on um, uh, certainly important aspects of this. Um, Although the Lake County Clerk, by statute, does not specifically have the authority to increase voter turnout, I think it's a very important part of the, that position to use that office um, in every possible way in the community and with uh, any number of organizations to help increase all sorts of election participation, voting, election judges, and also a, a, a significant emphasis on working with students in the high schools. As I mentioned before, there's already a program to uh, use high school students as election judges, and several schools participate, and it's very successful. They're excellent, uh, and I would like to see that expanded. I would like to work with the regional superintendent of schools and work on election day becoming an in-service day so that students and teachers alike would be uh, freer to participate, to vote, to serve as judges. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move to our one-minute closing statements. And since Carla Wyckoff gave the first opening statement, Janet Kilkelly will give the first closing statement. You have one minute. John F. Kennedy once said, things don't happen. Things are made to happen. And it's up to each and every one of us here to make this change in the clerk's office happen. Now, I'm going to protect your vote. I have a number of initiatives I want to do. I'm going to make sure that the office is run efficiently and effectively. As I said, I am not an insider. I'm bringing in a breath of fresh air. I'm coming in with new eyes. And I'm looking forward to representing everyone. I have the 20 years of public service behind me. I know how to deal with boards. 
So I am asking you for your vote on November 4th, Janet Kilkelly as your next Lake County Clerk. Thank you so much. Carla Wyckoff. I really do appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you, and I thank the organizations again for providing this, this forum, because along with the responsibility to vote, we also have the responsibility to educate ourselves and learn about the candidates and the issues uh, that are uh, key to the election. So again, I appreciate this. Uh, I have uh, told you about some of my technical and legal qualifications. I think if you talk to people who have worked with me uh, in the last 20 years, they will attest to both my character and my work ethic. I think I have the unique skills um, and ability to, uh, to serve as the next county clerk, to continue a tradition of excellence that has been in that office, and also to be prepared for what will be challenges in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a hand to our candidates, Janet Kilkelly and Carla Wyckoff. The Lake County Sheriff serves as the largest law enforcement agency in the county, with many key and diverse roles to include the Department of Corrections, Highway Patrol, Marine, and Homeland Security, to name a few. The Lake County Sheriff's Office is committed to serving and protecting all of Lake County through a Department of Law Enforcement professionals that serve as an in an exemplary manner because of a commitment to the residents and a dedication that goes above and beyond the call of duty. I've been your sheriff since 2006. As was stated earlier, there's a lot of functions that the sheriff's office performs, including the jail, a highway patrol, and an investigations division. Sheriff oversees approximately 600 employees and a $70 million budget. It's a big job. 25 years ago, I, I, approximately, I got out of law school. I went to work for the Lake County State's Attorney's Office for eight years. I went down to the Illinois Attorney General's Office where I was a supervisor in the criminal division, ran the gang unit, tried cases throughout the state. I was a special assistant United States Attorney, and then I had a private practice. Prior to that, I had been in business for a very brief period of time. All of that background prepared me for this job. And since being your sheriff, I can tell you that the background that I had is what has allowed me to keep us under budget for eight straight years. It's what allowed me and the people that work with me to keep crime down. Crime is down 8.6%. Warrants are at the lowest number. The Lake County Sheriff's Office leads the state in DUI arrests. We have officers out there working very hard and maximizing their abilities. We are keeping you safe on a daily basis, and I'd like to we have four more years to continue to do that on behalf of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason Pat, you have a minute and a half. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, thank you to the uh, League of Women Voters for putting this on. Uh, my name is Jason Pat, and I'm running to be your uh, next Lake County Sheriff. Uh, I have an 18-year career behind me. I'm currently an investigator with the Lake County Coroner's Office, where I've been just over seven years. Before that, I worked with the Lake County Sheriff's Office as a correction officer. Before that, I worked with the Great Lakes Police Department as a military patrolman. I served eight years in the United States Navy, which I'm very proud of, including a tour in Iraq. I was a member of a VBSS team while on board ship, which is a visit board search and seizure, where we went out into international waters and uh, boarded ships that were illegally smuggling things across the waters. There's a lot of problems in the sheriff's office right now. We have millions of dollars in lawsuits from discrimination. We have three wrongful deaths that, are, that have to be held, people have to be held accounted for, and especially I'm speaking of, of my opponent. Uh, you know, we need, we need accountability, and, and I think he needs to pay for that. And, you know, I really think that, uh, you know, all the troubles that have, that have been there, uh, you know, are the reasons that I'm running, and I really think that, uh, I should be your next Lake County Sheriff because I, I have the experience and I have the background to make the changes that are definitely needed. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, first question will be answered first by Jason Pat, and the question is, a comedian recently covered the lack of a national database rec uh, regarding crime and violence. What is Lake County doing about compiling crime figures? Well, I, I, know, that, I know that statistics are, you know, obviously they're kept because you know, things like that, you have to, 
when you're talking about you know getting a budget and going to the county board and getting money, you, you have to you have to get these statistics. You have to you have to bring them up. So um, I know they're being kept by all sorts of offices within Lake County. I know the coroner's office keeps them. I know that the sheriff's office keeps them, and they they essentially get compiled together um, to to give us the stats that we need. Okay, thank you, Mr. Curran. What I've done in, in terms of statistics is uh, brought, you know, very much uh, more technology in. We've expanded our IT department uh, significantly, and as a result of that, we're keeping better data than we ever have before. I was the head of gang crimes for the state of Illinois. In order to take down these street gangs, you need intelligence. You need to know how the pyramid sets up, who's who within the street gang organization so that you can get to the top and you get to the people that are really responsible for the poison. We've been able to do that through better intake in the jail. Our warrants are at the lowest number. They've been in, and anybody can say as far back as, as anybody knows because of the record keeping was so bad. Our record keeping is outstanding right now. We have it in our CAD system. It's out on the highway and we send it out to the chiefs of police throughout Lake County so that they can work with us as well. That's what good uh, data does for law enforcement. Thank you. The uh, next question will be answered first by Mark Curran. The question is, uh, what should be done about the drug problem in our area? Well, you know, drugs essentially, you can make no mistake about it, the illegal narcotics, when we're talking about heroin and, and cocaine being the biggest problems, methamphetamines to some extent, are distributed by street gangs almost exclusively. And as a result of that, you need to go after the gangs. And you do that by way of intelligence. You do that by way of a strategical uh, prosecution, working with the state's attorney's office, making sure that uh, you're doing everything you can to get the gang leaders behind bars because they're such a cancer to our society. But you also need to get out and educate. And we do that with an opioid task force that we help start up. Get out there, tell the people how dangerous heroin is. Don't touch it, young people. It'll destroy you. Thank you. Jason Pat? Well, I, I think we, we definitely need to beef up the streets. We need to get more guys out there. Um, you know, heroin, and, and, and I'm going to have to agree partially with my opponent here, heroin and, and, and illegal narcotics are, are a really big problem here in Lake County. I, I see that every single day in the, in the coroner's office where I investigate deaths from overdoses almost daily. It's absolutely terrible and it has to be stopped. Um, the only way to do that is you get more guys out on the street, you make sure they're trained. Training is very, very important. Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta get these uh, special uh, units out there. You gotta beef these up even more. And, and you gotta put guys in the street, like I said, and keep them trained, keep them up to date on everything that's going on. Very, very, very important. Thank you. The next question will be answered first by Jason Pat. The question is, Lake County is a very diverse place full of different languages and cultures. How would you build relationships and trusts among local law enforcement and Lake County's many immigrant communities? Well, I think the key is getting out there. I think the key is, you know, going into each one of these communities, you know, where, where you have more diverse backgrounds, you know, such as Waukegan, such as the Round Lakes. You know, you get out there and, and you work with the, the local leaders, the local leaders in the community in that area, and you see what their needs are. You know, whatever their needs are, you, you try to do whatever you can to meet those needs. So I think it's very, very important. And same with the law enforcement agencies. You know, you need to contact every law enforcement agency, sit down. I know you, you can go to the chiefs of police and, and, and address your concerns. And, uh, you know, I, I think this, uh, this needs to be done. Uh, you know. Thank you. Mr. Curran? Diversity is something that I believe is one of the, needs to be one of the strengths of a law enforcement organization. We come to the table from different walks and, and we bring different talents. I believe that uh, one of the things that has been successful as far as myself is being out in the community. That's why I have so much support in the African American community. Constantly out there speaking on, on issues and in, in, in the churches and in the uh, other organizations. The Latino community is a leader on the immigration reform. That's why Cardinal George, the Archdiocese, gave me the award for the Advocate of the Year. With regards to women, you know, bringing in, into an organization that has historically overlooked and not done anything regarding women. I've hired and promoted more women than they had in the first 170 years of the office. It's a commitment that I believe in, diversity. It doesn't make you popular with a lot of people, 
but it's the right thing to do, and I'll continue to do so. Thank you. Uh, following up on that, um, there was another question that asks, what would you say about the demographics in the sheriff's office, and what should be done about gender and ethnic diversity? And Mr. Curran, uh, please answer that first. You need diversity, and that's something that I've made a strong commitment towards. There's a, somebody that left our office recently that's sitting there in support of my opponent. He was a union leader. He wrote a letter uh, calling me a clown because I promoted women uh, out of sequence into command roles. Um, additionally, he called me a clown because of the fact that I was uh, statements I had made in terms of the need for immigration reform. These are tough issues. They're not what the rank and file, some, some people in the rank and file want to hear, but they're desperately needed. That's why we need a leader that's not afraid to stand up there, do the right thing, take the hits, and make the sheriff's office reflect the larger community. That's what I've done. Well, I think it's very important. You know, you have, a, you have Lake County, which is a very large county, and there's a very, very uh, diverse group of people in Lake County, and I think you, you need people in that in your agency, uh, you know, to, rep to represent them. You know, sometimes uh, an officer may go into an area uh, where uh, they may not understand them as well as someone else because they grew up, you know, in that specific community, and you need those kind of people to be able to call on them. I think it's very, very important to be diverse. Thank you. Um, the next question is uh, a two-part question. Um, what is your assessment of uh, crime in Lake County, and what should be done about the gang problem in the area? Well, there's obviously a lot of crime in Lake County. The, you know, I know burglaries are up, uh, drug use is up, drug dealing is up, gang violence is up. You know, so you know, go back to a previous question when I said, you know, we got to we got to beef up the streets. We got to get more people out there, and we got to we got to get them trained. Once again, beefing up people on the streets, getting your officers uh, trained. You know, making sure they know what's going on. You know, being vigilant, being out there. Um, you know, it's very very important. Also, you know, teaming up with. Uh, local law enforcement agencies as well. It's, it's not just the sheriff's office, it's all agencies that have to work together, you know, and including uh, uh, Lake County Meg. You know, they're, they're a huge component uh, of that in Lake County. So, you know, everyone works together and uh, you gotta crack down. Thank you, Mr. Curran. Crime is down 8.6% in Lake County. That's not by accident. One of the things that I did a number of years ago was took the grade one deputies who were in courts and move them all out onto the road in one capacity or another. We replaced them with retired uh, personnel, primarily part-time, some full-time, for substantially less cost. Drop the budget, put more boots on the ground out on the road. County board wasn't gonna give me more money to grow my agency. I did that, that was a tough decision. It didn't sit popular with, with a lot of people with the unions within the office, but it was the right thing, and that's part of the reasons why we're safer. As far as gangs, I've been fighting that fight for 25 years. I was ahead of gang crimes for the state of Illinois. You gotta know who they are and you gotta go after them. Make no mistake about it, they're out to poison our, our children and rob them of, of their future. So they're a great evil and we don't wanna apologize for going after them the way we do. Thank you. Next question is, uh, it has been stated that the outsourcing of security at the courthouse has led to security problems. Uh, do you support continuing outsourcing of security uh, or do you foresee making any changes? Mr. Curran? I put forth three different proposals for the sheriff's office to take over entry screening at the sheriff's uh, office. County rejected those. I'm in favor of running court security. Currently, it's US securities. Do I think they're acceptable? No. Am I embarrassed when I see that the people that they have at the metal detectors are being arrested? Absolutely. Do I think that, uh, that they're the best solution for, for the future? No. And you, know, the, the, you, you put forth the arguments, you make the fight, but in the end, the county um, you know, ha has that decision. You know, you're, you're given a budget, you're told, um, you know, this is the way it's gonna be. It would be more expensive for us to take over all of the court security, but I, quite frankly, I think that that would be the best uh, solution. We'll continue to advocate for that. Mr. Pack? I definitely think that U.S. Securities needs to go. Uh, there's a lot of problems, uh, like my opponent said, uh, as far as 
people being arrested for stealing, you know, as people go through the magnetometers, through the metal detectors, and putting their stuff through. I know that uh, within the last 24 hours, there was another person that was arrested. So I believe we're up to four incidents now uh, with this company alone. You know, when, when you're talking about the safety and security of the thousands of people that enter the courthouse, whether it's they're there for court, whether they're employees, they're judges, they need to be safe. And I think we need to have sheriff's office personnel on those front lines right there, making sure that people aren't bringing in those guns, people aren't bringing in those knives, and that people are not stealing from your everyday citizen or the employees of Lake County. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, question will be answered first by Mr. Pat. Uh, and the question is, uh, what, if any, role should religion play uh, in the day-to-day -day operations of the sheriff's office? None. Uh, I believe that there should be a separation of church and state. Um, I, I believe that obviously, you know, people should have faith and, 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 and believe in, in what they believe in, but I believe that decisions like that should be made, uh, you know, based on, uh, you know, your decisions to be law enforcement based decisions. Um, I know that my opponent has uh, made quotes in the past that says, I am a Catholic and that is the basis of which I make all of my decisions. You know, we need decisions based on law enforcement and knowledge. That's what we need. Thank you. Mr. Curran? I don't recall ever having said that. Um, so, you know, you'd have to show me that quote. But I am a person of faith, and I believe that faith guides me. And uh, it's very important to me, and quite frankly, I don't apologize for that. With regards to you know, the, the employees, you know, the, the, everybody that's a, their own decision and, and nobody should ever force religion upon anyone. I run a jail and our jail has been featured regarding what we're doing in terms of recidivism, ensuring that people don't return to jail. And part of that is the faith groups that come in. Moral rehabilitation has been said is in part from, from our faith because, you know, it, the faith is intertwined with don't victimize people, don't uh, hurt, you know, individuals, that we're all connected. When they get that message, you know, you could teach somebody a woodworking class, and now you have a criminal mind that knows how to do woodworking. We need a moral rehabilitation as well. So I welcome the fact that these volunteer people come in and do Thank what you. they do. Thank you. This will be the final question before we go to the closing statements. And the question will be answered first by Mr. Curran. The question is, there have been several multi-million dollar lawsuits filed against the sheriff's office, one involving a female deputy. How w could these pre be prevented in the future? We um, obviously do not tolerate any type of discrimination. That's something I've worked very hard against. One of the things that we've done is brought a consistency in, in having um, the, the hiring, the promotional process, what have you. And that, that was something that was missing historically. There was a lawsuit a long time ago, uh, or excuse me, involving an incident that happened more than four years ago. But let me say this. One of the things you, you don't do to, in order to prevent lawsuits is post, as he did on Facebook, no officer left behind. We disciplined 10 officers. We four fired four officers for dragging an individual through the jail in a way that nobody should ever be treated. That's not what happens when, when you're a leader. You don't stand with the guys that did that. That's what he thinks it's about, and that is not gonna raise the bar. That is not gonna prevent discrimination. That is not a recipe for a, a, a bright future. Thank you. Mr. Pat? Well, I actually think it's a very, very simple question. You treat people equally, you treat them fairly, and you show them all respect. It's obviously something that does not happen right now in the sheriff's office. You have a female who had her dog taken away because she was a woman, and that cost us taxpayers a lot of money. Now, in court, the quote that was said was, we have to give the boys a chance. Well, because of that decision that was made, you have a female who was discriminated against. The sheriff's office and my opponent lost that gender discrimination lawsuit in federal court. And that cost us a lot of money because he wanted to give the boys a chance. People need to be treated fairly and equally, and that's very, very important. We'll now move to the uh, one-minute closing statements. Uh, 
Mr. Pat will give the first statement. And there was a question that was not asked, but perhaps both candidates could address this uh, in their closing statements, which is, uh, how has your background prepared you to be our sheriff? Mr. Pat? Well, I think my background, the, my background has prepared uh, me to be your next sheriff. You know, I, I've, I've dedicated my entire adult life to, pro to protecting and serving not only this great country, but the citizens of Lake County in a law enforcement capacity. So I, I seriously believe that my background does qualify me to be your next sheriff. Something I wanted to hit on here, um, in the previous debate, my opponent had uh, spoke about school safety and you know how he's kind of, in his words, raised the bar. Well, we did some, there was some foying that was done here. And uh, August 10, August of 12 through December of 12, 1.1 out of the 42 schools were checked per day to keep our children safe. On December 14th, 2012, the day of the Sandy Hook shooting, no schools, no school checks were logged. December 15th through June 10th of 2013, 3.4 of the 42 schools were checked. August 2013 to June of 2014, 3.8 out of the 42 schools were checked. My Thank opponent you. says he was endorsed by these mayors, but Thank I have to ask these mayors a question. If your Thank chief you. of police gave this kind of service to your children, Thank would you, they Mr. still be Pat. employed? And the answer is no. My background of being in the criminal justice system for the last 25 years has prepared me in a number of different ways. Clearly, it's a management job. And what I've done, as people have seen, I brought in the top personnel out there in, in terms of chiefs of police from other agencies. One that was a former chief of police in Round Lake Beach, another Mundelein. And ultimately, that's what, surrounding yourself with talented people is what makes you safe. Surrounding yourself with, with people that are gonna hold everyone accountable helps to, to do that. You know, we're, we're in a fork in the road. I've got this background of having been a county, state, and federal prosecutor, having done all of these things. He has none of that. He's never had a stripe. He's never been in a management position. As a matter of fact, the secretary of the coroner's office, who's here today, he recommended that she should be the coroner when I was appointed the coroner. It shows you how clueless he is in terms of just what is necessary to run these big agencies. So. I, I submit to you, there's a fork in the road. It's a very clear distinction. I'd ask for your vote. Thank you. And let's give a hand to our candidates, Mark Curran and Jason Papp. Our next candidates are the candidates for the Lake County Treasurer. The Lake County Treasurer's Office safeguards taxpayer cash in the possession of the Lake County government through honest and competent stewardship by actively managing banking relationships and by investing temporary surpluses. Further, the Lake County Treasurer's Office as the ex officio county collector will bill, collect, and distribute real estate taxes to Lake County taxing bodies in a timely and efficient manner, providing excellent customer service to taxpayers by telephone, internet, and direct personal contact. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, being allowed to come here tonight. Um, it's an honor to be here with all of you, and thank you for staying so late. Uh, thank you to the participants, and also thank you to the hosts for tonight. Uh, my name is David Stallman. A little bit uh, about me, uh, I come from an immigrant parent. Um, I was college educated at the University of Illinois, DePaul Law School. Uh, I've been an attorney since 1973, uh, an entrepreneur, a businessman, uh, and I got elected uh, first uh, in county board in 1992. Uh, county Board is a uh, single member of districts at that point in time. I was lucky enough to be elected. I've been elected ever since then. Um, I rose to the ranks in, in uh, Lake County uh, by exhibiting leadership. And the board presidents at the time uh, acknowledged that and I have served in various capacities including chairman of finance, uh, most notably uh, vice chair of the county board. And I just recently uh, finished my tenure as county board chairman. It enabled me to see county budgets working, uh, uh, work, working actually, I, I, I kid around, but it wasn't it was really true, 29 hours a day, nine days a week. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, we balanced the county budget, uh, we have a AAA bond rating, uh, I've been an administrator uh, all of my life, and uh, I would ask for your support with regard to uh, voting for me for treasurer. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Ryback? I am, uh, oh. I'm Glenn Ryback your candidate for Lake County Treasurer. I also was elected in 1993. The Treasurer's Office handles over $2 billion annually. 
It requires an astute management style. It also requires innovative and advanced technology to track all those funds. Right now, where is that technology? I don't see it. This is a serious position and requires a serious approach. We need to stop discouraging electronic payments with punitive fees. Yes, the current system actually discourages electronic payments by assessing fees. The cost is high to process checks. Now, they currently have a lockbox system in place, and that system works fine for checks, but it's expensive to operate. It's a demonstrable difference from ACH. Incidentally, did you know that check fraud is the largest fraud in the US? If we haven't been struck yet, we're just lucky. The FBI estimates annual losses at $14 billion. Thank you. The first question will be answered first by Glenn Ryback, and the question is, what cost savings measures would you implement when you take office? The current operations are not up to date. We can't afford old systems. We can't continue to do the same old thing. Tradition may be fine at a country club, but this is a professional operation needing better cost control in management. As the mayor, I manage revenue, expenses, staff, press, employees, and constituent questions. This not only qualifies me, but has prepared me perfectly for this position. Thank you. Mr. Stolman? I can remember when cashing uh, county checks took about six weeks. Uh, it is now six days. You know, technology evolves continually. It is one of the most efficient, effective offices. Uh, Bob Skidmore has done a terrific job. He's a man of high integrity, a great administrator. He's below budget. Uh, the fact of the matter is I've helped work on that budget for almost 20 years. Uh, there's a lot of, obviously, technology that will come to light. Uh, the reality is I think that the treasurer's job is doing a terrific job. At this point in time, it's over 99% uh, collection of taxes. Uh, the reality is that are there any fees that are being charged? Yes. Can they be charged to the taxing bodies? No. Uh, it, the taxpayer has to pay for it. You can pay by check free. Uh, credit cards do cost money. I think it's 2.3%. Uh, and people are charged that. Why they do that? Perhaps for miles. Whatever the story may be, there's a, a, a number of ways that obviously technology will come into fold for the next four years. Thank you. The next question will be answered first by Mr. Stolman. The question is, how will you improve transparency about the county's finances to the public? Well, I'm glad you asked that. I was, uh, as county board chairman, I actually put the county checkbook online. Uh, people were astonished by that. Uh, my attitude was I didn't want to constantly get FOIAs. Uh, I said, if you want to find out where your money is going, what better way than find out who, what vendors are getting paid? I believe that a, a complete general ledger should be put online so that you see the analysis from every single department, from every single committee. The more the taxpayers know where their money is going, the better they will be educated, and obviously they'll be able to figure out what needs need, need to be addressed. So the fact of the matter is, uh, I believe in complete transparency. Thank you. Mr. Ryback? One has to be careful with how much is put online these days with the amount of hacking that's in, in force. And putting a general ledger online, I agree, would be a good idea, but it's not 1968 anymore. There are measures that we can put in place to inform the public of what we're spending uh, those measures need to be, they need to be secure. And uh, that's part of my plan as the four month or six, four to six month analysis of the department is uh, completed. Thank you. Uh, the third question will be answered first by Mr. Ryback. The question is, what if any, any changes should be um, made to the county's current investment strategies? Investment is very important. I have developed a task set for that. Let me share it with you. I'd analyze cash flow for effectiveness and efficiency. I'd run a diagnostic on all work processes. 
I'd review staffing requirements, eliminate duplication of workflow, and protect assets, but maximize investment returns. Make no mistake about it, the protection of, the, of taxpayers' funds are the most important thing. I would be less concerned about a return on the investment. There used to be banks that were paying returns. The banks don't want to even take the business anymore because it's costing them money and they're not getting paid back for it. There's a major bank that actually is not going to be part of our, our uh, uh, tax collection service. Why? We keep on asking them why. Well, the bottom line is it's costing them money and they don't care whether customers are coming in or not for good customer service. They're not going to be part of the system. So, at, so I guess the next four years, there's going to be a real concern with regard to investments. The investment policy is set by the county board. I've helped develop that. The fact of the matter is, though, preservation of assets is the most important thing. You are by requirement and by law not allowed to go out and do adventurous things with regard to investments. It has to be secure. And liquidity is very important because the, as money comes in, money has to go out. Our treasurer office pays very, very quickly. Everything is done electronically, no matter what is being said tonight. And the bottom line is that money gets paid out quickly so that the taxing bodies, the schools and Thank the you. park districts Thank don't have you. to go out and... and, and, uh, and Thank you. Uh, the next question is, what reforms could you bring to the Lake County Treasurer's Office? And Mr. Stolman will answer first. I, I think the uh, Treasurer's Office is being held, uh, being, being uh, administered properly. I don't think there's any reforms that are needed. Uh, I think that the amount of monies being collected are 99.9%. Uh, when, in fact, uh, uh, the monies are not being collected, there are tax sales, and those tax sales, the investors come in, quote-unquote investors come in, and buy the property so that the taxing bodies, the schools, libraries, uh, villages, are actually getting paid. What happens is, uh, in those rare instances where there are tax sales, uh, the, the investor charges a premium, and for two and a half years uh, uh, floats the deal. So uh, the reality is that there's... A, Treasurer's Office is doing a great job. It's under, under budget with regard to uh, the county budget, and it's under uh, personnel budget with regard to the county budget. Thank you. Mr. Ryback? My point would be that the office is way behind the times. You know, some of the fundamentals of the treasurer is that he's obligated to do no harm, to minimize costs, maximize returns, and you have to provide accountability and proper audit controls which are all geared toward risk control. To maximize investments, operations must be done rapidly. That equals fast. Never allow funds to sit in an account. The money must be working. Money is a fungible asset. It must be managed well, not just by protecting it, but working it. Thank you. The uh, next question, um, I think part of it was covered during my introduction, but the question submitted is, how much is the treasurer paid, and what are the key duties of the treasurer? And Mr. Ryback, um, you would answer first, please. I, I believe the treasurer is paid something above six figures. The duties of the treasurer are to collect taxes, to collect real estate taxes, inheritance taxes, all sorts of permit fees and, and money that's owed to the county and to pay all the bills and expenses of the county. Thank you, Mr. Stolman. All of the county uh, officers, sheriff, uh, clerk, clerk of the courts, everyone is paid consistently the same exact amount of money. What does the treasurer do? The treasurer actually sends out about 260,000 bills and is a collector. And it is $2.2 .2 billion at this point in time <laughs> that the treasurer collects and disperses quickly to the various taxing sources. Let's look at all the different levels of government. If you look at your tax bill, and there needs to be a little bit more transparency with regard to that, you have school districts, you have library districts, you have villages, you have uh, fire, pretend, uh, fire districts, you have mosquito abatement districts. They put in their uh, uh, money the request, the collection comes in, the treasurer turns it around extraordinarily quickly and puts the money out quickly to them. By, by law, the treasurer is required to do within 30 days. There are times where the treasurer does it on a weekly basis to make sure that the taxing bodies get their money quickly. That's called liquidity, so that they don't have to go out and borrow money. 
a final question before we go to the closing statements, um, and it will be answered first by Mr. Uh, Stolman is, why do you think you're qualified to do a better job than your opponent? I have prepared budgets for the county for the last 18 years of my 20 years on the county board. Uh, I balanced the county budget, which is a rarity. Uh, you look at the county, it's an oasis. Uh, you look at the state government, you look at the federal government, we are far different than them. We are, we are not dysfunctional. So you should be very, very proud of what we have. Um, we have a AAA bond rating. I was instrumental in getting that AAA bond rating and it's difficult to keep the AAA bond rating. I've been an administrator, I've been an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a, an attorney by profession, uh, but bottom line is I have been a, a, just a, a talent that I brought to the county board. It's been an honor and privilege with regard to representing the people. I've done it extraordinarily well and would like to continue doing it as treasurer. Thank you. Mr. Ryback? As I said earlier, spending nearly eight years as the mayor and the chief operating officer of a village, I've probably needed to address just about everything that comes along. And I believe this perfectly qualifies me for this position. Thank you. We'll now move to the one minute closing statements and um, Glenn Ryback will begin and you have one minute. Well, first of all, thanks to the League of Women Voters and the groups that have brought us here this evening for giving the residents the opportunity to hear from the next Lake County Treasurer. I want your vote, and here is why. As I've stated, this is a serious job requiring a serious approach. It involves human resources, disbursements, investments, and expense control. All of this is crucial to financial solvency. I bring managerial experience as a mayor. I bring a fresh perspective and an innovative approach. I have a working plan to accomplish goals immediately. I have given you my plan to be effective from day one, and I want to be your treasurer. Thank you. Mr. Stolman, you have one minute for a closing statement. In addition to the prescribed duties uh, set forth by treasurer, I, I am, first of all, physically responsible. I've been a physically responsible voice on the county board uh, since I've been elected. Uh, I plan on being an ambassador for economic development. Uh, continue that. I know earlier uh, there were some nice tributes paid to me. I was uh, uh, one of the uh, chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee for the study of the Route 53. Um, I plan on uh, exposing, and again, being a, an ambassador for economic development, I help formulate Lake County Partners, which is our public-private development. All of this is able to be done. I've done that before. I've served on uh, federal uh, steering committees while at the same time as being county board. So clearly there's a prescribed duty for being treasurer, and in addition to that, I bring value added to the table. I need your, vo I need your vote uh, to, to carry forth with this. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I'd like to thank our candidates for uh, Lake County Treasurer, Glenn Ryback and David Stolman. Let's give them a hand.